A task that pops up in Fusion 360 from time to time is how to place a V-Groove wheel on a V-Groove track in the proper position. Of course, it'll be a slider joint, but you really have no points to hook to. So I want to show you in this video the proper method to come up with these points. So the first step is to find a point which represents the intersection of the V-Groove wheel. Now you want to work on the fixed bushing of the V-Groove wheel. These are adjustable, the red ones down here, and these are fixed. So we'll work on this particular one right here. So we'll find that in the browser, and there it is right there. We'll make it active. Next thing we want to do, we want to put a, a work plane that is through the center parallel to this face right there. So what I'm going to do is measure. I'm going to pick from the inside of the board to that face and that's one inch. I'll click to put it on the clipboard. I'll next make a offset work plane from this face. It's negative so I'll put negative and control V to put in one inch. Say OK. I'm going to make that a little larger so you can see it's right through the center. So the next step is to put a sketch on this work plane we just made. So right click and create a sketch and then I'm going to look at it straight on. Now I want to work on the fixed bushing, don't forget that. And I want to get up inside of the wheat of the component so I will slice the sketch so I'm right up in the center. Now I'm going to be working in this area down here. So what I want to do is I want to project these edges. Now the easiest way to do that is to go to Create, Project, and then click on the Project Body. Leave the link on, that's fine, and click on this body and say OK. You'll see that you get reference geometry. Now that point is very close to the one we want. So what I want to do is get rid of this reference geometry in that point. I'll get rid of that and then I'll be sure I'm not confused by any other, other points around. So I get rid of those and next thing I want to do is draw a construction line. So I pick on line and construction and I want to hover over this, pick, I go up and make sure I'm in line. See it says parallel to that projected line. Just pick up in space. Start your line again and pick on this point and again just go up until it shows either perpendicular to the existing line or parallel to the one you just did. Now where they intersect is the point of intersection. So take off your construction line and pick work point or point, excuse me, and pick on that point. It'll automatically snap to it and finish your sketch. Now that point will be used in just a second to make our final attachment point. Now we can't use that point because it's on the wrong plane. Remember the plane is going vertical, so it's going to be perpendicular to the track. I need a plane, a point on a plane that is parallel through that point. So what I'm going to do is make a new work plane through that point I just sketched. So I'm going to do another measure. I'm going to go from that point to this plane at top. It's exactly one inch again, so I'll just put it on my clipboard. Next thing I'm going to do is an offset work plane. From this, it's going down as you can see, so it's a minus number, minus control V, and say OK. Now that plane is going right through that point. I'll expand it a little bit so you can see it and take a look. So as you can see, it's going right through that point. So now I have a plane and I want to make another sketch on that plane using that same point. This will give me a place to hook my joint origin. So I'll make a new sketch on this plane. Create a sketch. I'll then project again. And this time I'll use the project point. And I'll zoom up and pick on that point that I made earlier, right there, and say OK. Now while I'm over here in 
I'll go into sketches. I don't need the first sketch visible. I just need the second. And that's the point we'll make our joint origin on. So now we need to do the same thing for the track. You want to be sure and pick the upper track. So I'll finish that sketch. And now I need to go back to the top level. And I want to find this track in my browser, the top track. So I can pick on it. And there it is right there. I'm going to expand it and I'm going to make it active. So that's the track I want to do the point on. I need to find the intersection point of these two faces. So I go through the same process. Pick on this face and make a new sketch. I'm going to look at that sketch directly. And I'm going to project some geometry. I'll project the whole body because I want those edges. I'll just pick on that, make it linked, and say OK. Now that point is somewhere above that, so I'll go up and pick a line construction, pick on this point, and then go up and make sure it's parallel to that projected line and pick. I'll then do another line coming from this point, again going up, and be sure it's parallel or perpendicular to the previous line there. Now I'm going to put it, take my construction line off and pick point. And that point will be at the intersection of those. It's very close to the top, but there it is. So I'll pick there and say OK. Now I finish my sketch. Now again, it's in the wrong plane. So what I must do is find a, define a distance from this point, this plane, to that point. So I'll measure it. So I put my cursor here, hold down my left button, and find that face. There it is right there to that point I just drew right there. And the distance I record on my clipboard. I'll just pick it to put on the clipboard. So the next thing I want to do is do an offset work plane from this surface through that point. So I'll go to offset plane. I want to pick this surface. So I'll hold down my left and pick on that surface. And it's going to be a negative number, so I'll just put negative and paste again. And it puts a plane right through that surface. Let's take a look, see at that. If we turn that around and look at it straight on, you'll see that that plane, if I drag it over, it goes right through that point. So now that plane is the one I want to project that point to. So I have a joint origin that is on the right plane with the track. So I pick on that surface, that work plane, and create a sketch. I then project, again, go to Create, Project, go back to Point, and pick on that point we just made. Be sure you get the right one, and say OK. Now while you're here, scroll down a little bit and turn the sketch off, the first sketch off, because all we need is that point we just made in the last sketch. Finish your sketch, you're ready to go with your origin for your joint. Okay, the next thing you want to do is go back to your top level and make it active. We're going to add our slider joint. Now be sure you work with the wheel which up at the fixed bushing. Remember they're all going to have the point because they're all the same wheel but you want to use this one or this one. I'm going to use this one right here. Go to Joint. I'll pick a slider joint, and then I'll pick on that point right there. I'll then come down, and I'll pick on the point I made on the track. Slider works great. It's going the wrong way, though. So all you do is go to Motion tab, go down to Custom Slide. It's asking for a direction. Just pick on anything that represents horizontal movement and it'll fix it. Say OK and you have your slider joint. Make sure you use the rigid wheel. So basically you're finished at this point, but I'll point out something that is very critical. I made these bushings and wheels so they turn independently. Well, I need that on the bottom for the adjustment of the, the uh, adjusting idler but I don't need it up here. So if I try to move this carrier, you see 
it's going all over the place because these rotate. So let me go back to the original position. What I can do very quickly is pick on this component. I'll pick on component pick, this one and this one. And I can make it a rigid group and say, okay, now I have no problem with them rotating. And you can see, looking at the end view, it's right on the track. So that's how you put a V-groove wheel on a V-groove track. Now, if it was reversed and this was riding on the outside, it'd be the same procedure except working on the outside of the wheel and the track. I hope this helped you do better work in Fusion 360.